What's up and good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to another video. So today we've got a 2019 Ram 3500 in. And if you guys can look closely, the truck is kind of turning purple on us. And that is because of Iron X. So when the trucks get transported overseas, as this truck did, all that rail dust and overspray sits on the paint for a little while, then it sits in the dealership for a couple weeks or so. And that's what all that stuff is embedded into the clear coat. So when you buy a new car, you don't want to do this because you want to protect this car for the long run. And by putting a coat of wax with ceramic coating, like what we're doing to this thing, you don't want to protect all the junk under the clear coat. So by removing all this stuff, you'll have a nice clean surface and your car will look a lot shinier with all of it removed. So step one of the ceramic coating process would be to remove all the iron, clay bar the car after a wash, then we're gonna start doing the paint correction. So while looking at this light, you can see there's no more swirls being shown in the clear coat, meaning that the clear coat is leveled. And the way we're doing this is using a microfiber cutting pad and Shine Supply Classic Cut. This is like my go-to compounding process for every single car. Depending on how bad the defects are, but usually I can get about like 99% of the swirls gone with just those two. And like I said, this car is brand new, was factory ordered, was not sitting on the dealership lot for a long period of time, so this car was factory ordered. The defects came from the factory, not even dealership at this point. But to give you guys a little idea of what it looks like beforehand, here's a spot that I have not done. Let's zoom in up and close real quick. If we look closer at this light bulb right here, you can see, let's turn it towards us more. You can see the little spider that's being shown around the light bulb. I mean, look at all that. That is pretty bad for a brand new car with no miles on it either. So day one of the process is now completed. We did, how many hours of work was this? That many hours. So yeah, we've been working on the car for about eight to 10 hours now. I'm exhausted, it is one in the morning, time to go home, but this entire side over here, passenger side has been corrected and polished to a perfect finish and is now ready for the coating. The tailgate has been done, all the pillars are done. Tomorrow we're gonna work on the hood and driver's side as well as the roof. Then we can start coding. That's the fun part. All right guys, we're back here again for day two of the video. For day two, we'll be working on the driver's side now. Last night we ended off on the tailgate and the bumpers in the rear. So now we're gonna move on to the tailgate side, work our way through the mega cab and the passenger or the, and the driver's side doors. All right, quick little overview of what we're doing right now. So if you look closely, all those rolls are gone. And that is done by doing the, the cutting process and the finishing process. So the pads that we're using for cutting are the microfiber cutting pads from Meguiar's. This is the five inch one on a Rupes Mark II. Then we also have the three inch pad on the Rupes Bigfoot Mini. Then for the compound that we're gonna be using is Classic Cut, made by Shine Supply. This stuff is my favorite compound because it's a low dust very high cut and works very well with finishing off without any without much haze so after cycling out classic cut for a couple passes i move over to my other polisher which is the rupes mark one with a lake country hdo polishing pad the orange one and i'm using this isn't the bottle but it shine supplies classic polish which works out very well to finish out any sort of haze that is left behind from the microfiber pad. And me personally, I love using a microfiber cutting pad because it makes the process a lot quicker. 
And if you know what you're doing while using the pad and you feel like the feel for it, you'll be able to cut down and throw out the entire car much, much quicker. Using a foam pad is not a bad idea. Some cars are gonna need it depending on how soft the clear coat is. On a Ram like this, the clear coat is not too soft where it's not leaving too much haze behind. This is my go-to pad. So always do a test spot beforehand. Try out different combinations to figure out what process makes your life a lot easier. And for me, the process that I'm gonna be using today, like I said, microfiber cutting pad and the orange foam pad for finishing off. And doing a paint correction is not something you can just grab and like learn right away. It takes a lot of practice. So if you do want to get into this business, go to the junkyard, buy a couple of hoods, and just test out the way the polisher works. Read about them beforehand, know the understandings of what the polisher means, when the pad is spinning, when it's bogging, understand what all that stuff means before you start polishing your own car. And for those of you that are watching this video, you don't really know what paint correcting is. It is basically leveling the clear coat to where there's no more defects into the paint, leaving you a nice, perfect reflection. So when I'm doing a paint correction, I'm basically looking for the scratches and swirls that are left in the paint. Then when I'm leveling it after a couple passes and I still see one there, I will narrow down my process to the three inch pad and focus on that one swirl. You don't want to go too deep because then you'll cut through the clear coat. And clear coat's very, very thin, so you gotta be careful in knowing your limits of when to stop. So the goal of every car is to basically try to get it as perfect as possible without having to cause any damage to the clear coat and preserving the finish. Doing the test part, you're gonna to want to use the least aggressive method possible first. Figure out a way to remove the swirls without having to cut out too much clear coat. And for this truck, I'm using a microfiber pad and for my compound, I'm using Shine Supply Classic Cut. It's labeled as a versatile compound because you can use it as a polish also as a compound. It's very dust free and if you know what you're doing with it, you can get a very great and effective result with just this stuff. All right, so the driver's side is now completely cut and polished to perfection. Eddie over there is inspecting it for me because two set of eyes is better than one. How's it looking over there? Flaws yet. You're not gonna find any. All right, so all we got left now is the hood and the roof. And for the hood, we're gonna put a brand new pad on because we still want consistent results. So I've used how many pads already? Three cutting pads and about three foam pads. So by doing that, you're getting consistent results. When you start with one section at a time, so let's say, let's say we first started right here, first panel, we did one pad. As we're working our way down, that pad starts to die out. You know, all that compound and polish gets built up into the pores of the pad to where it can't do its job. So switching your pads out consistently is very important to give you the best consistent results throughout the entire car. All right, so after a lot of hours, the rest of the car has been paint corrected. Only been 10 minutes. <laughs> so the hood is corrected and polished. The roof is corrected and polished, and as you can see, I'm wearing these gloves because it's coating time. So we dusted off the entire car, we air compressed all the cracks and crevices. Now, it is time to use, where is it? This stuff. So now it's time to use panel prep, which is an alcohol-based spray that you put onto the paint and wipe off before you put a coating because it allows the coating to bond to the clear coat properly without having any polishes left behind. And if you do do a ceramic coating and you do not prep the paint right, the coating will not work and it will not last as long as it should be, as long as it should stay. So we grab our panel prep, grab a towel, a nice soft microfiber towel from the rag company. If you guys do want these towels, go to the rag company's website, use discount code GENESIS10 for 10% off your order. So what you're gonna wanna do with the panel prep and the microfiber towel is spray the panel prep onto the towel, wipe it onto the surface and flip the towel over and buff it off. All right, so this side is entirely ceramic coated. I wanna talk about the coating for real quick. So what we're using is called G-Technique Crystal Serum Light. Hey, you want a thin and crispy or hand toss pizza? Thin and crispy. We're getting pizza. I'm hungry. So here's the bottle that we got. G-Technique Crystal Serum Light, and 
the way you, the way you apply this product, if you saw my last video, you would see that I had this little thing on my finger. Let's hold that better real quick for you guys. We hold this thing in our finger and you have a droplet. You use a droplet and you put like a squirt or two onto the pad, then you go a straight line and you work the product in until it's completely even. The main goal of ceramic coating is to make it a nice even coat. I cannot stress that enough. The coating has to be even. And I'll show you guys a couple examples here in a second. Just wanted to explain what we're doing real quick. When removing the coating, you're gonna to have to do a three towel method, meaning you have one, two, and three towels. You're gonna to have one towel for the initial wipe, second one to follow up behind it. And because the ceramic coating spreads all over the place as you're wiping it, that third towel is the final buffet to leave it no haze and no more ceramic coating left to leave no high spots. All right, so I'm gonna record myself doing this tailgate bedside right here. And to start it off, we're gonna grab, we're gonna grab our panel prep right here. G Technique panel prep. Or panel wipe. So you're gonna grab this stuff. All right, so we have our microfiber towel that is soaked in panel wipe, not the one over there. This is a separate towel. And you're gonna wanna wipe the panel prep and you guys can see it being wiped on. You're gonna wanna wipe the entire surface in straight lines so we don't, so we don't mar the paint considering we just did a full paint correction on this thing. Okay, so once you've wiped down the entire panel of panel prep, you're gonna grab your applicator. Let me put the camera down real quick for you guys. All right, so once the panel is prepped, you're gonna grab your applicator, grab the ceramic coating, and like I said, put a couple squirts onto the applicator pad. All right, so we have the ceramic coating on the applicator pad. You're gonna go one straight line first. One straight line. Then you're gonna work it back and forth. You're gonna work it back and forth. Make sure you spread it very evenly. Then you want to cross hatch it. Go up and down. Go back the other way. The whole goal, like I said, is to have a very even coat. Take your time. Do not rush this process. So now the coating has been spread on very even. We have our three towels. First second over there, and third in the middle. You're gonna start wiping it off when you see this product start to sweat, meaning it's gonna look like it's literally sweating. <coughs> and let me see if the light's gonna pick this up. Let me zoom in. It's kinda hard to see on camera, but. So now the product's starting to sweat, meaning you can see it start to separate and spread away from each other, from itself. You're gonna grab your first towel, and straight lines only, and wipe it off. Now you're going to want to grab your second towel, follow up right behind it. And continue on to your third towel to do the final, final buff. Not car, the truck is completely finished from head to toe. Everything has been corrected, polished, and ceramic coated. The process to go over it again was we did the initial wash, we did a clay bar treatment, iron X like you guys saw in the beginning that turns the car purple to remove all that iron from being transferred over the railroads. Then we moved on to the paint correction process. And for the paint correction process, we used a lot of microfiber pads and a lot of orange foam pads. So the microfiber pad, like I said in the beginning, was a efficient way to cut through all the swirls and scratches without leaving too much haze behind and cleaning, and cleaning it up with the foam orange pad. I'll put a link to all the products I used in this video down below. 
That's all I got for you guys today. If you did like this video, give me a nice thumbs up, press the subscribe button, turn bell the notification on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And if I don't reply on the comments, DM me on Instagram at Genesis Detailing. I'll put that down below as well. But like I said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.